Alhamdulillah. We are live now, Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, inshallah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. I'm going to share the screen and then go ahead, inshallah. Share the screen. Share computer and sound. Share. We'll go this way. Inshallah. Admit. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Welcome to our brothers and sisters in the fourth lecture and session about reviving the sunnah of our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Please spread the word. We meet every Wednesday and Monday and our Main goal is to knock on the door of Jannah through two ways, uh, through reviving the Sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the abandoned Sunnah that people forget, and also through removing the barriers and the obstacles and the excessive luggages. Please, inshallah, spread the word. You can, inshallah, follow these lectures on the Facebook and inshallah on the YouTube, but inshallah, make sure, inshallah, you write notes and that you prepare yourselves, inshallah, bismillah, to practice all what we are talking about. We are, alhamdulillah, every time trying to review a little bit to remind the brothers and sisters, especially the ones who come for the first time and attend for the first time with uh, the main goal of these sessions, the virtues. And then every time we remove a barrier, if it is removing the barriers, or we will add sunnah and revive a sunnah from the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So our main goal in this series of reviving the sunnah is to revive a sunnah every time. Hundreds of sunnah, thousands of sunnah that people do not know, and our job, inshallah, is, Allah, is to practice this ourselves. And I want to add one of the virtues that I didn't mention the last time to give you the incentive to make you sure, dear brothers and sisters, that reviving the sunnah will bring a lot of rewards. So this is what I want to share with you for today. So this is what I wanted to share with you for today, that Alhamdulillah, the one who starts a good sunnah, the one who initiates a, a, a good sunnah, and this sunnah is, is forbidden by people, abandoned by people, he or she uh, uh, are the first one to revive them. What is the reward? The reward came in the ayah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Which means the one who starts a sunnah and people follows this, so he said to his family members, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did that in the authentic hadith, and people do not do it, so please do it, and he will revive it, and he will practice himself, and the people who see him, like his family members or friends, or the people who listen to his speech, revive the sunnah that he said, so what happens is going to be in the uh, credit of his good deeds. So the person dies now. And what happens? The meter counts. Why is that? Because the people are still practicing the sunnah, even if the person himself dies. In <laughs> the hell of his good deeds, when the person stands in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he will see a lot of hasanat. Ya Rabbi, I didn't do these hasanat. This is because the people, you know, behind you after your death, they did these hasanat, so it will be added to your credit. And likewise for the sins. ومن سن سنة حسنة فله وزرها. The one who starts, you know, the one who teaches his kids, his his friends, his his wife, his spouse, he teaches people the bad things that displeases Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It will be in the scale of his bad deeds. So that's why the matter here is really, really encouraging that we should, inshallah, spread this. If I know a sunnah and I know relatives, I know friends, I know uh, people who could, you know, follow me, who could, inshallah, practice this, I should do this because this is going to add a lot of hasanat to my credit. 
I wish, inshallah, that this is a good incentive, inshallah, in our series to revive the sunnah and to spread the word because it's going to bring a lot of reward by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last time we mentioned, the last time we mentioned about the sunnah during the rain, we have rain here almost every month, every two weeks. So we, it came in the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to say, to say certain dua, to make dua first, to say, oh Allah, make it beneficial rain, to say the word rahma. Uh, as I mentioned, to make dua because dua at that time will be answered, insha'Allah, and to say that we are shown with the rain because of the grace of Allah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to let the rain touch our bodies as and our clothes as the Prophet Muhammad sallam, used to do. So this is something that everyone can do. I reminded you with this sunnah the last time, insha'Allah. Please spread the word. Please make it. It's not going to take four minutes or three minutes to revive all these sunnah from the sunnah of our prophet muhammad sallam, but there will be a great word especially if we teach them for our kids and to our grandsons and daughters and the prophet muhammad sallam, used to be happy for the rain and he used to feel afraid from the clouds because it was a punishment for uh, the people of uh, ad and those are the translation for what i said Allahumma sayban nafi'a rahma mutirna bi fadlillahi wa rahmat. See, it's very easy. Few words. Allahumma sayban nafi'a. Wallah, make it as beneficial rain. Rahma, mercy from Allah. Mutirna bi fadlillahi wa rahmati. This rain came by the grace and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something that a lot of people do not say and a lot of people do not care for. And if we say this, we'll have a reward and we'll add to this to let the rain touch our buds and clothes and add to that that we make dua because the dua will be answered during the rain. If the rain is really hard and is really destructive, then we say, Allahumma hawalayna wa la alayna, Allah, make it around us, not on us. This is what uh, came in the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, let us talk about the sunnah that we have for today. I think Ammu Bishaq is not here today. And I wish that he would attend, but again, it is recorded. So inshallah, people can have inshallah an access for it. Now we want to revive the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in our houses. This is a broad topic. We're going to divide it to subdivisions. And each subdivision, we need to mention it in different lectures because it's a lot. So now we will focus on reviving the sunnah with our wives. And this is the first part today. This is the first part today. For the people who just entered, Alhamdulillah, they entered to the Zoom room in the right time. We are, we were reviewing what we mentioned the last time. And today we are reviving the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, abandoning the abandoned Sunnah that people neglect and people do not know and people forget inside the house. We need our house to be like the house of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The houses of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were fortresses. They are not fancy like these houses. You know what happened? Sa'id ibn Musayyab mentioned and some of the tabi'un, some of the followers of the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said that the rooms of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were not fancy. They were so decent. The roof was not that high. The teenager person, the teenager can touch the ceiling with his hand. So if the teen, imagine the teen, not the adult, raises his hand, he will touch the roof. But from these rooms, we learned a lot. We learned a lot from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu related to our deen, related to our worships, related to, related to the relations with the wives. So we heard a lot. You know, from you know, these fortresses and these chambers. So it's very important to revive the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, inside his houses, especially with the wives, then with the spouses, with the husbands, and then with the kids, and then the, 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 the measures that are related to the secrets in the house, uh, the ibadah in the house. So we will, inshallah, go through this, but 
Today, inshallah, we revive the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inside the house. And this is to have peace because we have a high rate of divorces. We have a lot of issues at homes. So we need to get back to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We want to see as men, how did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dealt with his wives? And then we will just, you know, talk in the other side. How do you know the wives of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dealt with the Prophet? We will learn about this as well. But let us start with the wives. This is the first session. We're going to, inshallah, continue the next, inshallah, bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wednesday with more, inshallah, sunan that people forget and neglect. But again, inshallah, I will mention four sunan quickly. And inshallah, in this sunan, we will have peace. We will have serenity. We will have happiness. But... Inshallah, we need to practice this. I need a verbal agreement for everyone to say, let us start, inshallah. So let us start, verbal agreement. Yes, inshallah. Amin. Amin. Inshallah. Amin. Inshallah. inshallah. Start, Amin. inshallah. inshallah. Amin. inshallah. Amin. For our sisters, this is just, you know, for your sign now. We will talk about mm. the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad related to the wives, how to deal with wives. But inshallah, after two lectures, we will talk about the sunnah of dealing with the husband that came in the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So for sunnah now, we will, inshallah, address our brothers, inshallah, to practice with their wives as it came in the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us spread the word, inshallah, to gain the word of everyone, bi'ibnillah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, following you and practicing this sunnah. Again, it will count even if the person dies. It will be a meter that will never stop. Right. Those are, and this is the only screen that we have for today, but we need to talk about this for almost two or three hours. I'm going to summarize it to make it, inshallah, very condensing, condensive and up to the point, inshallah, in uh, how many minutes we have. So I guess maximum 12 minutes, inshallah, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Four sunan. What are these four sunan? And I will mention a dalil and an incident an incident related to each one. So the first sunnah we revive as men with our wives and we should practice that we should have with our wives is to understand the psychology of our wives. So women are emotional and men are practical. They, they look at the secular side more than the emotions. So that's why women one, they want to feel safe. They don't like to spend money on her all the time, you know, without talking to her, without giving her this type of, you know, safety. That she is important for you and you will never abandon her and you will never leave her and you will never give her, her a hard time. This is something that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago did. The story of Umm Zara'ah. What is this story? Umm Zara'ah, with other women, they started to socialize and talk about their experience in their lives with their spouses, with their husbands. So Umm Zara'ah, it's a long hadith. She talked about her husband. She's Umm Zara'ah. So what is the name of her husband? My brother Siddiqui. What is the name of the husband now? Abu Zar, right? She's Abu Zar, and her husband is Abu Zar. So she talked about her experience with Abu Zar. She said, Abu Zar was so beautiful to me. He was so generous to me. He was the best husband to me. Till he got married to another woman. And she flipped him down. He turned upside down. He was not Abu Zar that I used to enjoy the life with him. He was the best husband for me. I enjoyed every minute with him. He was so generous to me. Everybody so, will turn upside down. Him? Excuse me. I said everybody will turn upside down when he married the second one. Yes. <laughs> not only that. Just to let us you know, uh, listen to, to the rest of the story. So he got married to another woman and he divorced Umm Zar. And Umm Zar got married to another person 
and he was nice to her, but she never forget her first husband. So her uh, second husband was nice to her, but she said this husband was not similar in any way and equal to the generosity and the kindness of Abu Zarr. So Umm Zarr was like complaining to the other women, how Abu Zarr, you know, you know, divorced her and how was it painful to her and how did she go through a hard time until now she cannot forget her husband, the previous husband. Then Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrated this to the story. She said that uh, Umm Zarr, she talked to us and she mentioned about her life with Abu Zarr and how Abu Zarr turned her life upside down and he got married and he divorced her and she cannot forget Abu Zar because he was so nice, he was so kind, he was an ideal husband to her. Now, imagine, why did Aisha narrate this to the Prophet? Uh, why is that? Because she didn't like what happened to Abu Zar to happen to her, right? She wanted to make sure She wanted to make sure that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will not give her a hard time and that he will keep this good relation with her. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam understood this. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't listen to her and said, okay. And you know, he, you know, he didn't react to her, to, you know, to the words of Aisha. He said to her in some narration, I will be to you like Abu Zar to Umm Zar. So I will be like exactly like Abu Zar to Umm Zar in the beginning of their lifetime. I will be like him to you. I will be kind. I will be merciful to you. I will take care of you. I will be so generous to you. But I will not divorce you. So here the Prophet Muhammad understood the psychology. Our wives, you know, they need this. They need to understand what bothers them and to let them feel that they aren't safe, that you will not give them a hard time, that you will not, you know, bother them, that you will not make their life with you unstable. They need, you know, such type of words that saturate their emotions. So this is what the Prophet Muhammad understood. So immediately he says, okay, I will be like Abu Zar to Muzar. Don't worry. I'll be this best husband. Abu Zar at the end, he divorced his wife. I will not divorce him. Don't worry. So, so intelligence, smartness from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu This is like a strategy for every husband to do. What bothers your wife? You know, she's different from you. She's, you know, a creature that is different from you. She's far from you. She depends on you. She's far from you. She, she's, you know, she needs you. And you should protect her. You should give her safety. You should not give her a hard time. You should understand her psychology, her emotions, the way she thinks, the way she, the way she make analysis for the things she's different from you. So that's why you need to be like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and understand this. Is this point clear, Alhamdulillah, to move to the other point? Uh, Dr. Atiq, yes. Brother Zafar, let us move on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Now, what did the Prophet Muhammad Sallam do? What was the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam after understanding the psychology of the wives? The Prophet Muhammad Sallam consulted with the wives. There is a fabricated hadith. In this hadith, it says that shawiruhunna wa khalifuhun. Consult women and then go differently. This is a weak hadith. This is a fabricated hadith. Yes, we consult with our wives. And I will tell you, imagine the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam consulted with Umm Salama radiallahu anha in a very, very critical situation. Very critical situation. Not only something personal, something that is related to the Ummah, something that is related to the whole army of the Muslims. In Sulh al hudaybiyah briefly, what happened that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam accepted the condition that the people of Quraysh imposed upon him. 
and the Sahaba didn't like this because one of the conditions that the Sahaba now they are like very close to Mecca and they want to make Umrah. So the, 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 the condition said that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, should, go, should go back. Umar ibn al-Khattab and other Sahaba, they didn't like this. How come? We are so close to Mecca now. We'll get back all the way around 250 miles and we will not make the Umrah and we are so close. The Prophet says, yes. So the Prophet وسلم, says, it counts for your Umrah. So now you, you brought some animals to slaughter now, slaughter them and shave or shorten your hair. The Sahaba didn't like to do this. What did they do? They are disobeying the messenger. In the morning today, وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا If the Prophet Muhammad tells us something mandatory to do and we do not do it, we are destroying ourselves. وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا So the Prophet Muhammad went to Umm Salam. Umm Salam was with him. In the tent, and he says, the people, they do not listen to me. They do not obey me. I'm telling them to slaughter the animal and to go back. And they don't like to do so. And I'm worried about them because this means that they will be punished by this. So Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet, now is, you know, giving an opinion in a matter that is related not to the personal affairs of the Prophet. It is related to the Muslims in general, the whole army, the whole Muslims on earth, the only Muslims on earth at that time. Those are the Sahaba, around 1300 Sahaba. They were the only Muslims on earth now. She's talking, you know, in the matter that is related to the whole Ummah. She says, I suggest, O Messenger of Allah, that you yourself go out and shave your hair and slaughter them. You yourself do these two things. Shave the hair and slaughter the animal, and then they don't leave them. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did this. He shaved the head, his, his hair, and he slaughtered the animal. What happened? Musalama was successful in her consultation and in her suggestion. The Sahaba Rudwan line, when they saw the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu doing this, they did exactly like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So it was a good suggestion and a good opinion from do you know Ummu Salama anha, to the Prophet? The Prophet followed her in, she, in what she said, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim got back to Al Madina and returned back to Al Madina. And Alhamdulillah, it was not, Alhamdulillah, no fitna happened. And Alhamdulillah, the Sahaba, when they saw the Prophet Muhammad sallam doing this, the Sahaba did like the Prophet Muhammad sallam. So the point that I wanna, inshallah, tell the brothers here and the husbands here that it is from the sunnah to consult with our wives. Understand the psychology of the wives, like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, make them feel that they are, alhamdulillah, in the safety zone. You should say the words and do the acts that make them secured and happy. And number two, consult with them. Yes, the final decision is for the husband because he's the captain. He's the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the power to take the decisions that match with the nature of this life. But the person can and should consult with his wife. This is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu did. So this is number two, and this is the sunnah number two with the wives. The sunnah number three, tolerating and find excuses for the wives. So the wife now did a mistake. The wife now didn't prepare the food. The wife now did, did something wrong you know, and talk badly to the husband, you know, uh, there's something wrong with his family members. Something bad happens from the wife now. So we should forgive and we should tolerate. We are highly recommended to tolerate people, you know, outside the marriage bond. What about your partner, the one who sees from you what nobody else can see? So it's a bond, it's a sacred relation. So that's why the person should forgive for the wife, whatever she does, because she's a human. Sometimes she's under pressure. And again, we will mention everything with Dalil. It happened that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, you know, in, you know, in, in, it was the, the night of Aisha radiallahu anha and another wife sent to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, a dish full of food. So it was not her night, but she sent it to the Prophet. So when Aisha saw this, that another wife is sending the food, 
you know, in her night, she did it like this. She threw the plate and the dish on the floor. Imagine this in front of the Sahaba. Not only between her and the Prophet, in front of all the Sahaba, Aisha said, this is my night. How come another wife sends to you the food to my room? So she threw the plate and it was broken. What did the Prophet Muhammad Sassam say? Did he say, oh, I'm Rasulullah, how come you do this? How dare you do this in front of the Sahaba? I'm not a man now when you do this. No, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam gathered all the broken pieces of this dish. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam says, your mother became jealousina. He said to the Sahaba this. And in many situations, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam used to forgive and used to tolerate his wives. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam never allowed his, you know, to revenge for himself because this will, you know, spoil the relation. We should forgive our family members. We should forgive our wives. We should tolerate. We should find excuses for them because they are humans. And when we commit mistakes, we need the people who forgive and tolerate us. So if we want this to happen for us, then when our wives make mistakes, we should, and we are highly recommended to forgive and tolerate. And we have, alhamdulillah, from the Sunnah of the Prophet what proves this, we can mention different examples, but I just want to mention only one example. Right. The last sunnah that we'll end with, inshallah, if it is sufficient for you, brothers, and we'll continue the next time, it's up to you. If you want me to finish in two minutes, that's fine, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Go ahead, sir. You want me to continue, inshallah, for two, min two more minutes? Yes, I inshallah. think. Right. Defending the honor of the wives, which means that when some ha harm happens to the wife, the person should defend his wife, should protect her. This is the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu You should not allow your wife to be insulted in front of your eyes. No matter who does this, you should protect your wife and you should be the safety zone for her. I will give you an example. The most beloved wife to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at a certain time was Aisha radiallahu anha. Aisha radiallahu anha, she was talking and pointing to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi that Safiya, his wife, is short. So she was talking about Safiya that she's short. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was so angry. It's something very easy. It happens a lot that people say, oh, this person is short, this person is heavy, this person is very slim. So when Aisha said to the Prophet and pointed, showing that Safiya is short, the Prophet Muhammad was so angry, despite of the fact that the Prophet Muhammad loved Aisha the most. But he said to her, you said a word or you did an act that is really evil to the extent that if it were to be mixed with the water of the sea, it will corrupt it. You said a very bad word to the extent that if it were to be mixed with the water of the sea, it will corrupt it. Innaki qulti qawla aw fa'alti fa'la law muzijat bima'il bahri la afsadat. This is what? This is when she said to Safiya that she's short. So the Prophet Muhammad defended you know, his wife Safiya. He protected her. So our wives should be protected. Again, those are the four sunan that Alhamdulillah, I mentioned the stories and incident proving what I said. And this is what our wives need from us to understand their psychology, to consult with them and to tolerate and find excuses for them, like what happened from the Prophet Sallam, and defending their honor when they are attacked. Those are Sunan and those are stories that mentioned in the life time of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu wish to be among those inshallah who revived the son of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, those who will be the best husband, inshallah, for their wives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us peace in our houses, to remove the shaitan away from our houses. Amen. Is everything Amen. clear, alhamdulillah? Amen. <laughs> it's going to be on my Facebook, inshallah, and I will send the slides, inshallah, so everyone will have an access to them. Imam Jabali, what, what about the husbands? What are the rights when for husbands? I said this, Brother Sadiq, but today, I will talk about, inshallah, the sunnah of dealing with the husband. But this is the first, this is the first part for women. We have another part. We have another part for women for, or two more parts, and then we'll talk about the sunnah with the husband because 
this is our houses and talking and reviving the sunnah in the houses takes priority. So that's why in our uh, interaction with our wives and our relation with our wives, we need to revive the sunnah. And then we will talk about the sunnah related to reviving, you know, the sunnah with our kids, uh, with, you know, uh, in our houses, when we dress, when we eat, when we, you know, uh, face problems, a lot of sunnah in the house we can do, but I started with the, alhamdulillah, with the wives and how to practice uh, the sunnah and revive the sunnah with our wives. There will be another part tomorrow. I know the sisters will be happy for this, but inshallah, I will talk about their, you know, their part and their duty and how to be mindful to the husband through what came in the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Imam, how I can go on the Facebook? Uh, I tried it. Your name comes up with somebody else, and I do not get it. I, I, I will send. I will send you, brother Zafar, the inshallah okay. my email address, inshallah. But okay. it's only Muhammad Jabali, and we are three people just standing beside the poles in Portland. So hmm. this is the new. It's Muhammad Jabali, M O H A M E D, and Jabali G E B A L Y. It's only one person like this, inshallah. So I'll, can you can you shoot me the email? Uh, I, I will take email. a picture. Sure. I will take a Thanks. picture from Thanks. inshallah my account. Send it to you, inshallah. Thanks. Please, Thank inshallah, you. please, inshallah, please, inshallah, just you know, send to me a friend request, and inshallah, make sure that you will watch this, inshallah, I will send the slides tonight, inshallah, so you'll be able to see this. Any Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just, you just to remind uh, uh, each other, you know, uh, all these had been mentioned in the Quran, in the story in Surah Al-Qasas how to respect the wife, defend the, the, the wife, how to take their opinion as a female and everything. In Surah Al-Qasas, when the Prophet Musa alayhi salam uh, went to fill the water for the girls, uh, and uh, they took their her opinion, uh, and she said, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, It was her opinion and her consultation. And Prophet Muhammad defended their, their dignity by filling the water, protecting them. All this, you know, it's approved by the Quran. The whole Sunnah that Prophet Muhammad did, it was approved in the Quran by that story, you know, in Surah Al Qasas. So Prophet Muhammad was practicing the Quran 100% with dealing with the wife. So nobody should doubt uh, anything uh, from Prophet Muhammad Sallam, you know. It happened more than one instant Prophet Sallam took the opinion. Even when uh, they washed his daughter Zainab uh, 